In this video I'm going to show you how to fix a car window sash. Sort of. I'm actually going to show you how to rig one because actually replacing a sash can be a big job in some cars. There are a bunch of different sashes on various cars but this fix will probably work for most of them. I hate it when people don't even attempt to hold the camera still but I don't have a tripod with me today so I apologize it might be a little shaky. I'm sure there are a lot of you that for whatever reason have very little time and limited access to tools. Maybe it's even an emergency situation where you have to MacGyver something just good enough to get by. Today I'm visiting someone about 400 miles from my home and I didn't intend to work on our car to this extent so I only brought my basic tools with me. I'm also leaving today so I have to get this done pretty quick. But that's okay, my situation forced me to come up with a quick fix. This is a generic video, so I'm not going to show you how to remove the door panel. So I'm going to take this bolt out and remove that piece of plastic off the back. This is the piece that come out, came out of here. Just a piece of hard plastic and it broke off. This is with the window all the way up. See, and that's the noise it was making right there, that loud pop, about halfway down. You can see that this window regulator was kind of pulling on the window, and I guess maybe they do that so that the window doesn't vibrate around as easy or something, but with that plastic, you, know, you can only pull on it so much before it's going to break it. Something else I was hearing was this thing. When I shut the door, I could hear that hit like that, so that's another symptom. I later realized that I didn't really show enough for some people to follow what I'm doing in the video. So I made these crude drawings to show you the parts that I didn't video very well. This is the window. This is the regulator bar. And the front sash is okay, but the rear sash is the one that's broken. I'm going to use this inch and a half by 16th inch thick piece of aluminum strap. I think it'll be strong enough and it'll be much easier to work with than steel. Now I'm going to grab probably a little less than a quarter of an inch of the end of this with my vice grips and bend it. I did find two pairs of vice grips so I put them both on here at the same time instead of bending each side a little at a time and having to go them back and forth. I can just bend it in one shot. And so there's my bend. I went a little bit past 90 just to give it a good grab. And here it is with the bend. This is a factory edge is why it's red right there. So. I gotta go measure to find out how far down here I'm gonna cut this. This is a 2004 Mitsubishi Endeavor, so your measurements will likely be different. Measuring from the top edge of the epoxy or adhesive that they used on the sash, for this car it looks like I need to have the hole at about an inch and a quarter from the bend, and then I need to cut it off at about two inches from the bend. Here's my mark for the hole at an inch and a quarter from the bend, and I'll cut it off at two inches from the bend. I'll drill the hole before I cut this off so it's easier to hold. Since I don't have my power drill with me, here's my redneck drill. I just put a quarter inch drill bit as far up in the vice grips as I could get it. This is a new bit, so drilling through this aluminum shouldn't be too hard. So there's my hole. Not the cleanest hole in the world, but it worked. It's easier than I thought it would be. Now I gnawed my way through that with an old hacksaw that I got here. Uh, now I want to go try it on for fit. So here's this. I'm just going to hook it right there. Put the bolt through. I'll make another piece just like it. To go back here on the back. And Maybe put some spacers on here so it doesn't get too kind of a crazy angle on it. So here are my two brackets. They're not too pretty because I didn't take a whole lot of time with them. But uh, I'll go out here and show you how I'm going to put them on the vehicle. And I chose to use a one inch long quarter inch diameter standard thread bolt. You know, this is stainless uh, just because I'm down here in a next to the beach in Cocoa Beach and I know it's going to get a lot of corrosion but it, you know this vehicle's already got 240,000 miles on it so 
this will probably outlast the car. You can see how on this other side, the metal part of this cross piece goes up inside here a little bit. It just kind of sets right up under the flat part here. So I'm going to kind of force that on this other side. So I'm going to push that right up under here. Put my bracket right on top of it like that. I've put a just a standard nut on here and kind of tightened down. That's going to be acting more like a spacer more than anything. So I have no way to show you this, but there's a nut back here on the back of this now, so I actually have two standard nuts on here. And it's tight, I've tightened it all down. So now I'm going to add my second bracket in behind this. So now you can see my second bracket is just sitting in here kind of loose. And then the final step here is to take this nylon lock washer, a lock nut, and put it on. That way it won't back off. I don't have to crank down on it super tight, but it won't back off if it does get loose. Here are some more of those crude drawings. I couldn't get the camera into this area, so I had to draw what it looks like from the side. From the side view, this is the window, this is the sash, this is the regulator bar. And then this is the piece of angled aluminum that I bent, and this is the head of the bolt, and the bolt going through here, and then here's the first nut that I put on, and I tightened that nut down. And after that I shoved it through the hole in the regulator bar. And this is just a zoomed in drawing of there's the window, regulator bar, hole in the regulator bar, and the sash. This nut is functioning as a spacer. And then once this side's in place, this is what it looks like here. You can see this is the piece of aluminum that I bent right here. And this is the head of the bolt going through the regulator bar. And then the lip of the piece of aluminum is grabbing a hold of the sash. Then I added this nut on to the back of the regulator and tightened it down. Then here's my second piece of aluminum that's grabbing the edge of the sash. And then the final step is to put the lock nut on the back side and tighten it down. One other thing is this this is tempered glass, so if you <clears throat> if you use something like steel and it has a rough edge up there on the top where it's touching the glass. Don't crank down on it too hard because you could dig into the glass and break it. So here goes the test. So that appears to work very well. Um, hopefully the window regulator will last long enough in the motor. When I shot this video I put the bolt in from the inside going this way. On most cars you'll probably have enough room to reach in behind the regulator and put the bolt in going this direction. That way you can see what you're doing and you have more room to move the wrench when you tighten the nuts. Also I was originally going to use steel strap but I think the 1 16th thick aluminum strap is plenty strong for this. If this window ever gets broken or I decide to replace the sash I'll need this bolt, so I'm going to use the old sash nut to fasten this bolt through this empty hole I found. Then I'll write a note on the metal in case I forget or someone else is working on it. That should do it. I'll update the information section from time to time to let you know if this repair is still working okay. If you don't see a recent date next to the status, shoot me a comment and I'll update it with the new information. Be sure to check the information section for parts descriptions, prices, and links to other videos. Sharing a video helps YouTubers more than anything else, but it also helps if you hit the like button, make comments, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.